Go ahead, please. At the very top of tennis, when fine margins can make the difference between conquering the court and leaving it empty-handed, everything makes a difference. From the perfectly strung racket to managing the mental side of your game. And for athletes on the wheelchair tennis circuit, this also means having the right set of wheels. Because you could have the backhand of this guy, but if you haven't mastered the movement of your chair, you won't even get off the baseline. We present Exhibit A, Novak Djokovic playing Dylan Alcott at a special event ahead of the 2017 Australian Open. More personalised than Federer's footwear, but with a much higher price tag, which runs into the thousands. A well-fitting chair, assessed and measured to fit an individual size and classification, will mean it responds to every movement from the player, improving court coverage, speed and shot power, and reducing the risk of injury in the process. We probed the mechanical minds at RGK, who make the Grand Slam chair, a game changer when it was launched, due to the addition of the knee brace, which enabled the individual to be fully locked in and aided for better performance. It is also one of the chairs you see a number of the elite players competing with on tour, including Jordan Wiley, Gordon Reed and Alfie Hewitt. And these are RGK's top five things to consider when fitting a chair at elite level. Number one, the center of gravity measurement. That's basically the wheel position to help determine the spin on the chair. Number two, height. Getting this right is important so you can get the ball over the net. In some cases, you may notice slight differences between open and quad division players in terms of seat height. That's mainly because low core function means quad division athletes may not be able to sit as high as an open division player, so you may see their seat in a more bucketed position. Number three, foot plate position. In simple terms, that's about whether the player has their feet behind their knees or at 90 degrees when playing. Number four, backrest height. Tennis chair backrests in general look a lot lower than the ones you'll see on an everyday wheelchair, and a low backrest can help with the serve, but it's also important not to go too low as the player could then lose function support. And finally, number five, the degrees of camber on the wheels, which is usually set quite high to enable a quick spin. Of course, because the chairs are so individualized, you do see variations in the traditional model and look, France's Stefan Houdet's chair has a smaller seat that places him in a position similar to as if he was standing on his knee. This design enables him to transmit the power generated by being able to twist his torso to his lower body and results in him hitting very powerful strokes. However, he must still follow the rule of keeping one buttock in contact with his seat when striking the ball, and for that he has a seat belt attached. Also, if you're ever watching a quads division match, don't be too surprised if you see some athletes, the USA's Nick Taylor and Great Britain's Richard Green, for example, playing in power chairs. That's because the division allows the use of these for players that would have difficulty maneuvering a manual chair. And just like those in a manual sports chair, some players do opt to have chairs specifically designed for tennis to give them greater agility to move about the tennis court. So next time you're watching the best of the best in wheelchair tennis on the Grand Slam stage, now you know some of the off-court considerations behind every single push for the title.